Hi guys, Dave here again. I've been out with a friend of mine overnight doing a hammock camp. We're probably in a about 50 k's from um, Darwin in the rural area. Beautiful night, quite cool. Middle of winter for the rest of Australia. We were shivering at about 17 degrees Celsius. A uh, few mozzies out, but uh, good night. Always uh, good to break the hammocks out and have a yarn and a brew. I did a video review last week on my day pack, which was built around my Dave Canterbury slash the Pathfinder School canteen cup cook system. Uh, I basically broke it down, showed the canteen system. I've already done a review on that, plus the bag it was carried in. Another bit of um, gear I carry in there is a modification that allows me to desalinate salt water into pure water in an emergency situation. And I'll reiterate in an emergency because it's a very, very slow process. Now, uh, Mick, who runs the YouTube channel Checkmate9591, um, asked me a question and basically just wanted me to do a quick demonstration on how the process uh, works and how the kit all comes together. So, for you, Mick, here we go. I've had a few other queries over the, the last year or so, so I'll um, run through it. Won't spend too much time on the canteen system. You've all seen it before. Basically, it's a stainless steel military-style system. Comes the, the stove, either do solid fuel or um, a methylated spirits type burner over it. And the military style cup canteen. Uh, these are used regularly by the Australian Army and the US Army. Most of these have got a, a different bail system. So that's what you get from the, the Canterbury system. It's the container, the stove and the cup canteen. One of the first things I went out and bought was an aftermarket lid for the for the cup. This is made by what's called a heavy cover. Very heavy duty steel. It costs about 45 bucks in Australia so they're quite, quite expensive. What I did with it was I modified it with a 6mm grease nipple. Basically just drilled a hole through it. The grease nipple, if you're not familiar with it, it's a um, pressure system. It has a ball bearing in a spring. Basically I had to drill that out. So what I've done is um, bought the grease nipple, quite cheap from a local hardware shop. Drilled the centre of it out so it's, I don't know if you can see it through there, but completely hollow. Drilled a hole in the lid and then basically screwed the, the grease nipple straight through. Now, that didn't require any extra seal, and I've got some metal cement just in case that I didn't seal properly, but this certainly did. So here is that. So we've got the, the lid with the, the grease nipple. Another thing I went out and bought was 6mm plastic tubing. And the whole idea is you fill your canteen or the canteen cup up with um, salt water. You can also do you know, if you're in, a, in a swamp area with very, very brackish water. Get your heat system going under there. I'll be using a Trangia style metho stove. The idea is the tube simply fits on the outside like so. And basically once heat's applied the water starts to boil. The idea is the, the uh, salt water it evaporates into steam, the steam is your pure water, it goes through the pipe, that then runs down into a another receptacle. In this case I'm just going to use my, my normal canteen. Uh, takes a little, little bit of setting up. It is a very, very slow process. I've only got a limited amount of methylated spirits, so I doubt we'll get more than um, a little bit of, bit of water in a cup. But in a survival situation the idea would be you'd have this in a campfire, just going all day constantly feeding it while making sure the flames didn't get high enough to affect the, the plastic. That's it, simple science, just basically turning um, polluted water or salt water into steam. That steam becomes, once it's cooled, becomes um, fresh water. Okay, I'll just set this up and we'll have another look at it. Okay, here we've got the sill set up. As you can see the plastic piping coming from the canteen. Just a couple of cross sticks off the ground, just to give it a bit of height. And then the, the tubing will go down into the receptacle where hopefully we'll end up with uh, pure water. The last thing you need to do before you, you kick it off is keep the middle point damp. And 
and what I'll be doing is just wrapping a, a moist bandana once I get it up and running around the middle of it. Just helps the steam condense back into um, water and run down into the receptacle. As I said before, fuel source will be a transient style methylated spirits burner. I think I'll get about 15 minutes um, burn out of those, so I've got one refill. So I don't know how much water we've got, but we've got a, about an hour before we have to um, pack up and get out of the area we're camped in, so I'll set it up and we'll see how we go. I'm okay, just going to add water into the cup canteen at the moment. Now this is fresh water. Three quarters of a canteen full there. What I've also got is a uh, bag full of salt, just to add some salinity to it. I'll make that quite heavy. The salt will be saturated in there. And I can assure you, very, very salty. I'll just fast forward and we'll set the rest of the, the stove area up. Now you've got the metho stove burning definitely on. Stove on. Don't have the videos looking at the other end, but um Mick, I did remember my tripod this trip. I did bring a small one, I might upgrade it to a larger one next time. So lid on. Dampen my bandana. Also, you wouldn't be using your fresh water in an emergency situation. You'd be using your you know, your brackish or your your salt water. Okay, that's soaked through. Now it's been quite some time since I was in high school doing science, so if any of you know, my um, viewers out there uh, can see something I'm doing wrong, uh, feel free to let me know. I'd love to love to refine the process. Just leave that for a couple of minutes and we'll see how the water goes and I'll apply the canteen to the other end. So there we are, got everything going away. The water's not boiled yet but basically it's uh, fully set up. So we've got the tubing running through a, a moist bandana at elevation. Moving down the other side into my metal cup canteen. Keep another bottle of water on hand just to keep this damp. And what I'll do is uh, turn her off now. I'm sure you've all seen water boil. I'll come back in uh, five minutes or so and check how it's going. Okay, water's just starting to boil. I don't know if you can see it, but the very beginning of the uh, tube's starting to get the first bits of um, condensation.
I'll leave that to go its merry way. Once we've got some more action, I'll turn the uh, camera back on. Yeah, a couple of more minutes in. Uh, we're at full boil in the cup canteen by the sound of it. And a lot more sort of moisture starting to form. So from my experience, it's not too far off. Having it start to bubble and spurt, and that'll eventually track down into the receptacle at the other end. Okay, about the 10 minute mark here. It's hard to see because of the sun, but we've got the condensation is um, slowly making its way up the, the pipe. There is a lot of um, waste steam coming out here. Ideally, all that would be captured. I have in the past used alfoil to block this off. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring it out on this trip, so I'm just going to have to put up with it. It'll be a... See how we go. But um, I'm not confident we're going to capture a hell of a lot of water. It, it's not going to produce a lot anyway. My experience was about 20 to 25 minutes boiling. It was probably a tablespoon of water. So doing this on a daily basis off a metho stove, you're going to add a, add a fuel long before you ever get a full cup of water. But doing this all day in a campfire where you've got unlimited um, firewood, yeah, you've got a lot more of a chance of um, getting a good result out of it. So I'll come back in a, a minute to see how much we've actually captured. And here we go. As I thought, the, the seal was just letting too much steam out. So I've uh, dealt with this before. Just bought by um, sealing it with alcohol worked fine. I don't know if you can see it, we've now got basically the water spurting up. And that sun's right in the way. And obviously the condensation, if you can see it, will go all the way. And we're spurting out the other end. So it does come down to keeping that the seal on this robust. I'm kicking myself for not remembering that alfoil. It's usually always in my, or is in my day pack. I just didn't bring it out today. You can see you're, you're getting a bit of a squirt there. It's still done a, not a huge amount. As I said, in my experience, I, um, we're probably going to get a tablespoon of water in about 20 minutes or so. But on a large scale, if, you got, if you know, you're in an emergency situation, the one thing you do have on your hands is a lot of time. Um, this will get you through the day as long as you're not exerting too much energy. There we go, got a, got a fair amount uh, bubbling up at the moment and uh, condensing and what I'll do is I'll wait for this metho stove to run dry and then we'll see how much water we've captured. Okay, so we finished the metho stove, a bit of condensation left in the... Just let that drain in. What I usually do is just blow that down. And as well, don't forget that the, um, the steam that's formed on the inside of the lid is also going to be pretty pure. So you can either um, try and drain that in or... or um, Mop it up. Not too much there, a few dribbles, but... One of the issues with the canteen I found when I did the initial test is if you look at the um, the cover, it's got the ventilation hole, so obviously for letting steam out when you're cooking. In our situation, we need a, a full seal. So at the end, the it required downward pressure. If we had that alfoil to make, sort of block these holes up and seal it a bit better, we would have got a much better result, I've got no doubt. But for people who are thinking about mucking around, there's maybe some baling wire or something like that would help you to get a proper seal there. But as we found when we did apply that full pressure, it, this thing was really spurting. So quantity-wise, as I said, don't, don't expect you're going to be filling your canteen with this in, in um, you know, was like the 15 to 20 minutes ball time. We did lose a bit, I've got no doubt. Probably about a quarter again, I think we would have lost to excess steam, but you can see you've got a decent mouthful of water there. Um, and if you've got nothing better to do during a day and you've got this fired up all day in a campfire, it is going to probably save your life. But definitely do not rely on this if you're doing coastal bushwalking, thinking I'll only take a litre of water and I'll invent one of these desalinisation units and go, um, distill the water as I go. It won't be happening. Your output is just not going to be great enough unless you greatly refine it and improve the efficiency of it. I'm certainly having no ideas if anybody 
besides the seal, I think some, anything I can do better, I would love to hear from it, because I'll certainly incorporate that into it. I'll keep having a play around with it, and we'll, I'll repost another video if we get a better result out of it. So, thanks for watching, happy trials. I guess one thing we better do is actually confirm the fact that this is pure water now. Um, I've just had a taste and definitely tastes like lukewarm tap water to me. So over to my number two, Jason. He's going to give it a taste test and uh, see what his result is. I like tap water. Yep. No salinity? Nothing. No. Yeah, it's I couldn't not. taste a bit of salt in that. That's good. So yeah, definitely, definitely the uh, system works, just very, very slow, very, very labour intensive. I think I've done that to death. So um, yeah, if anyone wants to have a play with it, good luck. Take it.